we might have gone out a couple of competitions, but the title charge is still on. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys, to part 10 of Building a Legacy. We're currently with our first club, Cambridge United, in our second season. Today, we play MK Dons, and then we play Shrewsbury. But before we get into any of that, if you could just drop a thumbs up just to say that you like the video. That way we can promote the channel a little bit, and if you haven't, just share it with your friends. So to begin with, we will look at some of the news that we've got. So the first thing we can look at is contracts. Now my contract is still set to expire at the end of this season. I was offered a new contract by Cambridge for £2,500 a week, but they wanted to tie me down to a three-year deal. And I really don't want to be here another three years. It's not that I don't like the club. It's I just want to build my legacy, which means I want to move on and start getting to a higher level. Also in the news, we've got transfer news with January now out of the way. So if we just jump down here. So we'll look at transfers out first of all. The first transfer to leave, we haven't actually got down here, was Andre Burley. Now Wickham recalled this lad. He's, they said that he wasn't playing. So that's why they recalled him. Um, I tried to get him back in on loan and they were just having none of it. If we have a quick look, it was a shock to me that they recalled him. But you can see here, from the first half of the season, he'd played 25 games for us with a 7.4 average rating. When they recalled him, I was panicking. I had no idea what to do with the fact I'd lost what had been our main centre defender for the last two years. And as you can see, they've played him six times in the, in the league. And he's got a 6.95 average rating now. So he's dropped off quite a bit. So back to the transfers. And also there was an out for Pascal Juan Estrada. Now you might remember me signing this guy in the summer on a three. But he never made any appearances for us. He wasn't getting into the team at all. He never even made any non-competitive appearances last season for it Or this season for us. So Coventry come in with an £18,000 deal for us, plus a 40% add-on when he sold again. I just thought it's well worth making the deal and doing it. It's another 20 grand into the um, kitty. And one of the club visions was to sell players for a profit. Well, we brought him in for free and sold him for a profit. So I think we've done that well. Now means we've made £120,000 in transfers this season. There was one player that we brought in. We brought in Dijan Tetic. He came in from Reading. He is playing in the Volante role for us. You can see here he's got some really good stats to be playing in that role. Digby was playing in that role. What we've done for Digby is moved him back into centre defence to take the position that Andre Burley had left. He has really shored up the defence there as well. I think Digby's doing really well there. We can take a look at him. So Digby on his recent form. So yeah, you can see here 7.5. He's come in for a central defender there. 7.5, 8, 6.7 against Bristol Rovers, but a 7.7 .7 there. So he's having his best run of games ever since we've dropped him into that centre-back position. And another thing Digby offers us is... When you look at his height, six foot five, 13 stone seven. So many times we've been beaten by the ball going over the top and none of our defenders being able to challenge for it. Digby sort of eliminates that problem. Being six foot five, balls ain't going to go past him over his head. He's strong enough to battle most strikers. He's got a jumping reach of 14 and a heading of 14. So although his best position is somewhere within the middle, playing centre back, which is this position we're playing him on here. He's just got the stats for it. His marking's not brilliant, but we're playing him along... Who are we playing him alongside, actually? We've been playing him alongside Ispan Rossi, who's got 14 marking. He's six foot four, but his strength's not brilliant. So that's why he's been being 
beaten in the air. But with the two of them, we seem to have really shored up the defence anyway. So losing Burley might not be a massively bad thing. So the next thing we need to jump on to is the fixtures and what has happened since the last time you were with us. So you were last with us for the Oxford game. We've had a couple of wins after that against Wickham and Grimsby before falling across a couple of defeats for the first time this season. We got hammered by Brighton 4-0. We didn't go there and put out a weak team, even though it's the Papa John's trophy. I mean, you can see we've got a pretty strong team out there, but we just got absolutely smashed and we're out of the Papa John's trophy for it. Following that, we then suffered defeat to Peterborough in the league. So our first league defeat of the season, it was a 1-0. It wasn't a brilliant game. I mean, we tried changing things about the 80th minute, I think I left it. It wasn't exactly like it was... Too late to make the changes. The game was so tight. But yes, we suffered our first league defeat of the season. So no unbeaten season this year. We then did jump back with a win over Warsaw. It wasn't the best win that we've ever had. Paul Mullin needing to put a penalty away. But Warsaw scored on the 93rd minute to make us a little bit worried. But nothing to really write home about there. We then went to the London Stadium, lost in the FA Cup, so we're now out of the FA Cup as well, to West Ham. West Ham getting another one over us this season, so they put us out of the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup this year. Again, it was a it was a good solid game. They took the lead earlier on. Um, by the half hour, they were already on the 2-0 up. We pulled it back in the second half. El Mazzuni with a fantastic strike on the 65th minute to try and put us back level, but... It remained 2-1 for the rest of the game and we just couldn't get the job done. From there, we went on a nice unbeaten run in the league. We've just absolutely smashed it. What we've got, six wins there out of eight. Two draws, drop points against Sheffield Wednesday at home and Bristol Rovers away. Bristol Rovers, we were absolutely looking dominant in that game. Two all doesn't say that. We were 2-0 down. They had three shots all game. We had about 17. And we just converted two of them. So I was a bit disappointed to only get a draw there. Just before this game, we played Sunderland in the league. It was 2-2 earlier on in the season against Sunderland. Well, this shows the improvement we've had. We went away. We went all the way up to Sunderland. And, yeah, picked up a 3-0 win here. You can see the difference in XG. It's not like it's a lucky 3-0 win. Completely dominated that game. Well and truly deserved. So this is where it leaves the competitions. The uh, board's expectations in the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup and Papa John's trophies have all been met. They wanted to reach a second round of the FA Cup. We were, got to the third round, second round of the Papa John's. We got to the second round and they wanted to be competitive in the Carabao Cup. Well, getting knocked out to a Premier League size said we were pretty competitive. As for the league, we are flying in the league we're nine points clear of second place peterborough we're 19 yes 19 points clear of blackpool who are in third and the playoffs so with only 36 points available we've not really got to worry too much i think we're definitely making playoffs and i'm pretty sure we're making automatic promotion back to back promotions here we come so this is what you were here for, the MK Dons game. This is the team that we're going with today. We're going Mithoff in goal, Field, Ispan Rossi, Digby and Nold across the back line. We've got May, Tetek and El Mazzoni in the midfield. Up front we've got Khan on the left, Adams on the right and Mullin up top on his own. There's a couple of injuries that have stopped us today. Harvey Nibs is out injured, we've got Darling out injured, East is unfit. So there's a few players we might have been playing ahead of some of these. But I'm pretty confident we can get a result today against the MK Dons. We should be alright. It's just a game that's really about securing them top two spots for us now. I think we need probably about three more wins and we'll confirm the top spots then. I don't think anyone's going to catch us from there. So great opportunity. Send them out like that. I'm finding that the gestures ain't doing too much in this game. So maybe they need to be a bit more influential on gestures to make me use them. 
Just need to change the MK Don shot map to our shot map. So the Dons are gone with a 5-3-2 formation, and we've got our 4-3-3 up. So hopefully it does what we need it to do. So we've got a corner here, El Mazzuni. It's gone in near post. It's been headed away. Khan a collect. And Khan's gone into the box himself. He's been brought down, and we've got a penalty kick early on here. Paul Mullin, he's going to step up. How many times this season have you watched this game live and seen Paul Mullin miss penalties? He scored his last two. He's probably due a miss. Oh, he's put it beyond the keeper though. We lead 1-0. And the MK Dons have come here thinking maybe they could get something. And instantly we're telling them, no, this is going to be our game. 1-0 we lead. This has been one of the issues. I've switched the tactics up a little bit more to play a little bit shorter and we're not really creating as much anymore. We're being a bit more clinical though. So the chances we're creating are a little bit more solid and more likely to go in. Fraser's got a free kick for Dons into the box. It's headed on and it's over the bar. Set pieces is something we need to work on. We've conceded a few goals from set pieces. I'm going to demand a bit more from the side. I know we're winning, but we're not really creating anything. We might have to speed up the passing in the second half just to try and break through them a little bit more. We might be better off playing wide in this game. I mean, at the moment, we've got the lead, though. Do I really want to go messing about with something where we're leading? And that's half-time. We're well ahead in the XG. Don's not really catching us at all. Just going to get in there, point our finger. Played well, but I know there's room for improvement. And then we will restart. I'll give it to about the 55th minute. And then if there's nothing improving on the going forward and creating chances, I'll speed up the passing. Nichols with a goal kick for the MK Dons. He's gone big ball upfield and out wide. We've headed it forward. Field to May. May's given it away. I don't like that. Botang coming forward for the MK Dons. Out wide to Williams. Williams taking on field. And he's got past him. Botang into the box. He's took a shot. Mitoff no problem there for Mitoff. He's been a solid keeper for us this year. To think last year he couldn't get in the team, Burton was in there. That's a big throw from Mitov. Are we looking for a quick counter here? Adams going through on his own at the moment. Still Adams. He takes the shot. Oh, I thought that went in. That must have... What did that do? Hit the bar and come back out? Well, the XG rises. The shot count rises. I am going to speed up the shots now I'm not going to go wide or anything at the moment we'll just do this one change and if it doesn't do what we need to do if we don't start improving our shots we'll start playing a bit wider and try and beat them attacking wingers that they've got let's encourage the team we've got an injury to Digby that is not good that's our first choice centre back now Oh, what's the injury saying? Potential foot injury. That does not want to be a bad one for the rest of the season. We will bring in... Williams can play there. That's interesting. Let's have a quick look at Williams. His tackling's not great. His marking's not great. His heading's all right. Six foot. Um, let's bring Jack Iredale on for the position. I was thinking of making changes now anyway. We'll just make the one change. See if we can do anything else in this game. I'm going to go wider now. See if we. I just want to create one more chance. I want one more goal. Corner kick into the box. And it's just over the bar. Corners have been so dangerous against us this year. Gonna demand more out of the team for the last ten minutes. 
and everyone's cheered up and as happy with that. Mitov. Ispan Rossi. He's gone out wide. And he's found his man. Khan through to Mullin. Mullin's gone through. And you can see the speed of picking up the pass in there. And Paul Mullin gives us a 2-0. Probably uncatchable lead in this game. What a shot. And what a goal from Mullin. The ball from Khan was fantastic as well. The Dons have made a switch in their formation. So we're going to go back to how we started the game with our narrow formation and our slower passing. I'm just hoping that that sees us through. By keeping the pitch narrow, hopefully it stops Botang in that attacking midfield role. We're nearly there. We've nearly got another win on the board. Yes, we've had less shots, but the XG tells you we're expected to win this game. And it's another win. I celebrate in my purple jacket. Get into the dressing room. Hands in pockets. Good win, boys. And that has inspired everyone. All right. So, top of the league. We're still nine points clear. So, that means Peterborough must have won their game. We're now 22 points clear of Blackpool. So, we've increased that lead between us and the playoffs. We are look like we're heading to the championship and then that makes me feel like do I stay with Cambridge and have a shot at the championship with them because it's going to eliminate being able to play for anyone else in the championship it does mean potentially moving abroad headline rear guard action provides memorable use victory fantastic win right Paul Digby's injury is a pulled ankle ligaments. He's out for three weeks. That's quite a long time to be without him. Especially our darling's out for up to three weeks as well. He's our third choice centre-back. So we're going to have to muscle through, I think. I'll be back for the next game in just a second. We're back for the Shrewsbury game now. And today it is a proper vital game. This is a game that could secure us a playoff spot already. And it's only February. If we win or draw, Sunderland must beat Peterborough, who are in second place. If they don't, that's it. We are in the playoffs. No one expected that at the start of the season. So with that said, the team we're going to go with is Mitov in goal, Field, Ispan Rossi, Williams coming in for the injured Digby, and Noel across the back line. Midfield, East, Tetek. And Phillips in the middle. Up front, Khan, Adams and Mullin. Hopefully, this is a side that we can beat Shrewsbury with. And we'll get into the dressing room. We're going to see if we can fire up the side. I think we'll point our finger. And with favourites, we should be winning comfortably. Side looks motivated. So they've gone with a 5 Two three formation, and we've got our four three three. We did have to go a little bit faster to get through the dons. We're now the formation similar to this. Get my shot map on there. Nothing much really happening at this moment. I was expecting us to come out swinging. I think I need to go and demand more out of this side. They're not really putting in the performance I was expecting. So we've got the first highlight of the game, and it's a Cambridge United highlight. Noel looks like he's lining up a big throw. He's gone to Adams. Adams pulls it back, and the shot from East is hit the post. And Mullin gives us the lead. We need to be keeping an eye on the Sunderland result now, because if they can't match us, we are in the playoffs. Paul Mullin has been absolutely fantastic since we've moved him to that position. The Sunderland are equal with Peterborough at the moment, but that won't be enough for them. And we come into half time 1 0 up. I just, just noticed that Sunderland have taken a lead against Peterborough, so we might not be getting playoffs today. Just going to go with the recommendation down there. Everyone's motivated again. We'll get out of this second half. I'm going to have to keep an eye on the fitness of Tetek. 
he is playing with a slight injury. We've been advised that May should come on for Tetek now. Give it to about the 60 minute mark. To start look at making some changes in a second. Shrewsbury have uh, just raised their game a little bit by the looks of it. Alright, let's get onto the bench and see who we can make changes for. Can May play that position? Can't even remember whether May can play that position or not. Let's jump onto the tactics and then we can see what it says about him going in there. Yeah, let's play May in that position and who else can we drop on? Let's bring Pereira on for Khan, who's not having the best of games. He's playing all right. I wouldn't mind getting a second now. Maybe if we just speed things up, we can break them down a little bit more. Let's drop a bit of encouragement first. And if that don't work, we'll speed up the pace of the game. Let's get on to the instructions. Speed the pace of the game up a little bit more and stretch them a little bit more. Sunderland are winning, so it doesn't really make any difference this result at the moment. I mean, the one difference it is going to make, we're then going to be 12 points clear of Peterborough. I'm going to go back narrow, but keep it moving quickly. There we go. That's the man more for these last couple of minutes. I was expecting a bigger win than this. It looks like that might be it though. The time is drawing to a close. And yep, that is that. The ref's got a blow now, surely. Come on, we're nearly a minute into more than we should be. There we go. So we've picked up the win there. Nearly let them back into the game on the XG here, but we continue to do what we needed to do. Let's jump into the dressing room. Well done, lads. Good win for us. So we've picked up the win. Sunland have clearly picked up the victory there because they remain just 30 points behind us. <laughs> 30 points behind us with 30 available. We're going to be put playoffs within the next couple of games. As for... Peterborough, they're now 12 points behind us. It could be as soon as, what, six games that we win the league? That is nuts. I really did think we'd be fighting around 17th, 18th this season. I didn't think we'd be worried about the relegation, but there's no way I thought we'd be up here. Cambridge in control as Slop are brushed aside. Didn't know that was their name, but there we go. So that's where we're going to leave that today. I think the next fixtures we'll come back for, we'll look to come back for Wigan-Oxford, depending on what goes on in the league. If there's a chance of winning the league sooner, we'll be back for them games. For now, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a great big thumbs up. And if it's the first time watching, hit that subscribe button so you can keep seeing these videos coming. For now, I'll see you again soon. <laughs>